And so they hoped. They hoped that he would deliver them from the weight of grief and death and loss and conflict and demonic forces. They hoped for life in the midst of death. They hoped for freedom from the empire. And then their hopes were dashed. Their friend was arrested and killed. Empire flexed its muscles and took in its most terrible weapon. Their hope was no more. Their hope died on a Roman cross, a sacrifice to empire's arrogant power. I wonder how they felt. I wonder how they felt when he was with them once again, when scars matched their grief and when their hopes rising again, though perhaps more tentatively than before. Maybe this time things will be different, they might have thought. I wonder how they felt. I wonder how they felt when they saw him lifted to the skies, when he promised they would receive a gift from God. But most of all, I wonder how they felt when he told them they would be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. I worry that too many of us make a mistake. A witness is not a spectator. There's a difference between bearing witness and looking upon the scene as an onlooker. There's a difference between the kind of witness that enters into the pain of a hurting world and a spectator who gawks from a distance. Witness is a high calling. Often it is a burden. For witnesses to the ends of the earth will see stunning instances of God's expansive grace, but also crushing visions of death's cruel rule. I wonder how they felt. I wonder how they felt when their feet were pointed out to the ends of the earth to strive to, through an unjust world, a world driven by empire and warfare and death. I wonder how they felt with only 120 of them were called to proclaim a kingdom that promises to set right an upside down world. I wonder if it felt like hard won hope. A hope honed on realities of death and loss. A hope that has been dashed over and over again. A hope that persists not because we choose to be naive, but because God has made a promise. And because God has made a promise there we cannot stay in one place, gazing into heavens, waiting for Jesus' return. No. We are called to be witnesses to the kingdom. We can barely imagine one where death and violence and grief are no more. One where the weapons of war and destruction give way to the generosity of God's grace. I wonder how they felt. I wonder how they felt taking that first step into the world so familiar and yet so strange. Perhaps they wondered if they could really believe that this time would or could be different. Perhaps they wondered if life would once and for all conquer death. They had seen it happen before. Could it really happen again? Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see you.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into your own will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that as we may all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one of God.
and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them to the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into the prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and, and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. I invite you to rise as you are able and join in the gospel acclamation. Now, let's be honest. 
These words can be powerful words of promise spoken to loved ones and friends and strangers. Or they can be just empty words when we don't know what else to say. And sometimes we pray for the hungry, the poor, the persecuted, and it's like pinning it to God's to-do list. You know, Lord, do something about the hungry. And I go on my way. But the fellow beloved in Christ, today's text and today's world, society is calling the church. It's calling all flavors of Christians on this. And it's calling baloney. Worship started today with the story of the ascension. A reminder that we're called to be witnesses, not spectators. Our gospel text today, Jesus is praying for his disciples, for you, for them, for me. And the reason Jesus is praying for his disciples and the things he's making them and wanting them to hear are three things. Know who and whose you are and remember that. Two, that we, even in our differences, remember the disciples. They were from different life experiences. They most definitely had different personalities. They were different people, and yet called to be one, called to unity in Christ. And three, they're called so the world may know the love that God has for you and the world through Jesus Christ. Yes, beloved in Christ, we're called to bear witness in our lives and not just be spectators. <sighs> this was a hard worship service to put together. This was a hard sermon to write. If you ask either of the barbs, they will tell you there were multiple bulletins. There were multiple worship orders. Catherine and John don't, didn't have a clue where I was heading today. I sat through senior pastor's meeting as we talked about what do we preach on a Sunday after events in the world like today. On a day when our hearts and souls are heavy, we're tired, we're worried, we're scared. We're confronted with the sin and the brokenness, the disease and evil of this world. So today's sermon, we're going to start with some practical advice. I have three pieces of practical advice of how we live as Christians in the midst of this. One, limit your access to the news and repeated information. Watching it repeatedly on the news, reading it repeatedly on social media doesn't change the event. It doesn't make it go away. It doesn't make the loss less tragic. So stay informed, but listening to it over and over again isn't good for our children, it also isn't good for us. Two, pray. Give it to God and listen and respond. Our first reading that Beth read for us gives us some guidance. Paul and Silas were out doing God's work, and as they were healing and freeing people from the bondage of spirits, freeing people from bondage of evil, 
they found themselves persecuted and thrown into jail. Now, it wasn't just a containing cell. They were beaten, and then they were placed in the innermost bowels of the prison, where it was dark, where it was dank, where it was heavy, where it was hard to breathe, the pit of darkness and despair. And they were shackled, bound to walls. Did you catch what they did? Paul and Silas began to pray. Paul and Silas began to pray and sing to God. And the prisoners were listening. So what happened as Paul and Silas were singing? Well, first of all, they were remembering who and whose they are. Two, they were united together. And three, they bore witness to the prisoners. And eventually, even one who was the cause of some of the persecution, the one who bound them to the walls. The scripture goes on to tell us, as they sang, the earth quaked, the walls shook, the crumbled, and all were free. Now the jailer was traumatized and fearful of his life because if they were gone. And Paul responds, do not be afraid, we are all here. And scripture tells us that through this witness, the jailer and his family's lives were radically changed. Why? Because of the prayers of Paul and Silas. Their prayers caused the transformation the earth shook, and they and others were set free. Paul and Silas bore witness to God and lives. Even lives, lives and even lives of unbelievers, undoubters, unpersecutors, were transformed through their prayer that day. Prayer and action. Beloved of God, prayer can and does change things. Prayer changes situations. Prayer changes people. And prayer changes the prayer. Third, Mr. Rogers has given us some sage advice on how to help children and each one of us through crisis and trauma. His advice is, when I was a boy, my mother would take me in her lap in the midst of crisis and trauma and say, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Look for the helpers. Now, if you get caught up in the news right now, you can probably look at me and say, but hey, pastor. Yeah, it's easy to look and find helpers that may disappoint or fail. But don't get stuck there. Look for the helpers, because there are helpers nonetheless. Whether they're EMTs or teachers or principals or staff or community members, doctors, nurses, border patrol, there are helpers. Did you know there were businesses in San Antonio, Texas that closed their doors and sent their employees to Uvalde to run their businesses? so the community members could be home with their families. Look for the helpers. So my question, so our thing that we wrestle with today. Beloved people of God, how many of us have offered prayers for the people of Uvalde or of Boston? or any other situation you've encountered, experienced, or heard of this week. 
people of God, we should and we must pray. And we must let our hearts be transformed to do something. Because our Ascension Day text today and our Gospel text today pushes us. It tells us, yes, we need to look for and look to the helpers. People of God, the angels are speaking to us as they've spoke to the disciples looking to the clouds. We must do more than just look. We must bear witness. We must be helpers. When my girls were little, there were a few songs that we played regularly going through our minds, partly because they contained values that I wanted my girls to grow up with the message ingrained. I'm going to share one of those songs today. Because my not-so-little girl reminded me the other day of this song. It's a song by Matthew West, and it's called Do Something. I'm going to share it with you. I woke up this morning and saw a world full of trouble now. I thought, how did we ever get so far down? And how is it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven and I thought, God, why don't you do something? I couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty or children sold in slavery. The thought disgusted me. And so I shook my fist to heaven and I said, God, why don't you do something? And then he said, I did. Yeah. I created you. If not us, then who? If not me and you? Right now, it's time for us to do something. If not now, then when? Will we see an end to all this pain? It's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. I'm so tired of talking about how we are God's hands and feet. It's easier to say than to be. Live like angels of apathy who tell ourselves, it's all right. Someone else will do something. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of life with no desire. I don't want a flame. I want a fire. I want to be the one who stands up and says, I'm going to do something. If not us, then who? If not me and you, right now, it's time for us to do something. Come on. If not now, then when? When will we see an end to all this pain? It's not enough for us to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. We are the salt of the earth. We are the city on the hill. Shine, shine, shine. We're never going to change the world by standing still. No, we won't stand still. No, we won't stand still. If not us, then who? If not me and you, right now. It's time for us to do something. If not now, then when? When will we see an end to all this pain? It's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. 
It's time for us to do something. It's time for us to do something. So what does this mean? Well, it means you better get praying. And you better get listening. Because your pastor's not going to stand from the pulpit and give you a to-do list. But I'm going to tell you. Listen. And if God is calling you, and God is nudging you to engage in political process in some way or another, then by all means, do so. Maybe you have connections or feeling called to respond in some direct way, to be helpers and witness down in Texas. Most of us won't, but maybe you do. Do something. No matter what, there are things here we can do. Right here in our backyard. To bear witness to God's love, mercy, and grace. Columbine happened when I was teaching. Steve, I imagine you were in the same boat. Other teachers, other school professionals, I bet you you were in the same boat. To read the list that gets us all the way to Uvalde gives me a gunache. I can't imagine how teachers, students, and staff are feeling right now. We need to love our children and surround our children, their teachers, their educators, with love, support, grace, and understanding and most of all our prayers. We each need to look in the eyes of one another, our friends, our neighbors, strangers, those we agree with, those that we don't. People of God we must look into their eyes. We must see the face of the divine to see others as people of worth, of value, Someone who God loves, even if we don't understand. For we all are someone for whom Jesus prayed in this gospel. Someone who Jesus experienced death on the cross, rose again and ascended for, and promises to be with us always. Dear Christians, may we more than look. May we be witnesses in a world longing for hope, longing for helpers, looking desperately for the good news of Jesus Christ and the transforming power of God. And as we do, may we do so, trusting in Christ that we are and we have all that we need to bear witness to this hurt and hurting.
sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. God, in your mercy. God, giver of life, you intend for humans to live together in peace. We, we pray to be aware of your love and your presence among us, that trusting in your love for us, we may live in hope and share that love with others. God, in your mercy. Keep in our lives those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among the nations and peoples. God, in your mercy. Grant, grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry. Steve, Amanda, Dave, Ginger, Jana, Steve, Dale, Lori, Brent, Chuck, Melissa Stenke's mother, Carol, Linda Luss's mother, Joan, Carl Dirksen's brother-in-law, Roy, and those known among us who are ill with COVID. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. God, in your mercy. God of resurrection, we remember before you those who have died, the children, teachers, and staff of Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. We commend them to your eternal love. Grant healing and wholeness to the survivors who are wounded or traumatized, and restore all whose spirits are maimed by such violence. That we may serve as your arms of love and care for those in distress. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of true might and redemptive mercy, receive our prayers and grant us to become your instruments of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We prepare ourselves to gather at the table. Just a reminder, if we are using our communion cup packets today. So there are two seals on the top. There's a clear seal that will get you to your bread. The purple seal will get you to the wine. All are welcome to come to the table. You will come forward and receive a communion cup, and then you may go back to your seats and receive communion. There are little white paper goats on the end of your seat rows to put the garbage in, in there. All are welcome. We prepare ourselves now with the time of confession and forgiveness. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us a ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God, to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and not done. Uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of our holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
invited to this table. Each and every one of us, with our doubts, with our fears, with our scars, our joys, our dreams, our hopes, our questions, are invited and welcomed here at God's table. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And here we will be met. Here we will be fed. We are given a taste of the abundant life that Christ desires for us. And we are full and filled with forgiveness and love. So come now. Not because you must, but because you can. Come. You are invited. This table is for you. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power,
you are able. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, generous God, for it is the spread of the cup. We have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. And receive the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Oh, my God.